Hi, my name's Georgia from BN Australia. I'm a physiotherapist and expert in pelvic floor physiotherapy. Today I'm going to talk to you about vaginismus and we're going to explore a little bit more about what it is, why you might have it and how you can potentially treat it. So vaginismus by definition is involuntary spasm or tightening of the pelvic floor musculature normally at the entrance of the vagina. Now you can have primary or secondary vaginismus. So primary vaginismus might look like you've never been able to use a tampon, right? When you first got your period, your first menstrual bleed, you tried to use tampons or whenever it was that you first tried to use tampons and you were physically unable to insert the tampon into the vagina or if you could insert it, it was really, really tight and uncomfortable. That would be primary vaginismus. You've never been able to comfortably use tampons, comfortably have penetrative intercourse, comfortably do gynecological exams. Secondary vaginismus is when somebody has previously been able to do those things. So you might have previously been able to use tampons, have sex pain free, all of that. And then for a reason that's either apparent or not apparent, it becomes really difficult, uncomfortable, painful, impossible to do those things. So we can see secondary vaginismus in a variety of different cases, such as after a trauma or a sexual assault, after gynecological surgery or abdominal surgery, or after childbirth. Sometimes there's no known cause of why somebody might develop secondary vaginismus, but sometimes there is. In any case with either of these options, the treatment for it is holistic and multimodal. So just doing dilators for something like vaginismus might work somewhat, or it might not work at all, or it might work entirely, but for most people you need dilators and something else in order to get really good outcomes and to achieve your goals. So when we're talking about the pelvic floor, the base of the pelvis and the base of the pelvic floor is where we're talking about these muscles that are spasming. So we've got two layers of the pelvic floor, the superficial layer, which is on the outside of the vagina, the entrance of the vagina. And then if you peeled back that layer, we'd have the deeper layer of the pelvic floor, which is kind of like a sling or a hammock that holds up everything inside. Now, if you've had pain or discomfort every time something's either gone near, in, or inside the vagina, you're not only gonna have tightness through these muscles, but you would have also now developed a fear and pain response cycle, whether that's subconscious or consciously. So if you think about every single time you walked past your, your partner, they punched you in the stomach, eventually you're gonna start pre-tensing your muscles in your stomach in anticipation that somebody's about to punch you in the stomach. The same thing can happen through the pelvic floor muscles and through the genitals. So if you've had an experience where sex, using a tampon, something that's penetrating the vagina has been painful and uncomfortable, the more times you're exposed to that stimulus, the more likely you are to tense even more, to pretense in anticipation or in protection of that something might be entering or coming near to that space of your body. So the body's trying to protect you, it's doing this overreaction in protection to try and make sure that you're safe and that you don't cause yourself harm or pain. But in the case of vaginismus, it can't differentiate between what's a good stimulus and what's not a good stimulus, so it just does everything. So the role of treatment is to retrain the brain and the body and that connection to understand that certain things are not a threat and are not painful stimulus like a tampon or like having penetrative sex in a consenting way with a partner. We want to retrain the body to accept something inside the vagina. Now that can look like a couple of different things. So it might look like unpacking with a psychologist or a sexologist about any fears or any trauma in your past that might be preventing you from achieving that penetration from a fear or a worry side of things but it may also have a physical element in that if the muscles have been tight and shortened for a long period of time, we might need something to physically stretch them and to open up that space. Often we need a combination of the two. So often we need to, to assess and to delve into what's going on from a psychological point of view while also retraining those muscles to accept penetration. And that's where dilators can be really handy. They can be used to both stretch the vaginal tissue as well as to show the brain and the body that, hey, it's okay to have something inside that space. 
And because they start from really small up until quite large in a progressive increment, it means you've got time to process, your muscles have got time to adapt to that stimulus in a controlled way because you're in control of the dilators before you then introduce a partner or something else into the equation, like a gynecological exam, where you have less control over the situation. So it gives you back the control. It gives you a tool that you're able to use on yourself to start to show your body that certain types of penetration are okay and that your muscles are actually able to relax and stretch and open to allow that penetration to occur. So for some people, depending on your goals, you might start from size one, which is our smallest dilator, and then you might work up to size eight if the ultimate goal is to have vaginal penetration with a penetrating partner. If your only goal is to just be able to use tampons pain-free and maybe do gynecological exams when needed, then you might just need size one to four, which is our small set of dilators. So depending on where you're at in your journey and what your ultimate goal is, will depend on how far through the vagina sets you get and you absolutely don't need to do them all if your goal isn't to accept something that large inside the vagina. Our dilators progress in both width and length, and to get the exact measurements, you can head to our website, bn.com.au, where we've got a measurement of the width and the height of every single dilator that we stock and that we make. This will allow you to then marry up your size with what your goal is or what your penetrating partner's size might be so that you know that you're absolutely able to accept that size without any pain, without any trepidation before you then go and introduce a partner into that situation. For more information about vaginismus, about dilators, about all the other things we do here at BN Australia, head to our website bn.com.au and you'll find all the information there.